All right, I want to today uh, talk about a type of part that will generate negative voltages. You give it a positive voltage and it generates a negative voltage. And you say, well, how, how can you do that? And these are, these are things called uh, charge pumps or uh, switch capacitor, uh, things like that. So um, let's take a look at, let, at a simplified schematic first, just to give you an idea of what this part is all about. I think they have a, I think they have a good one in this, uh, yeah, they have a good one in this data sheet. They're all about the same. There's a whole bunch of these chips, they're all, and they're all about the same. But uh, let's take a kind of an idea here. We have an oscillator, so the thing is oscillating. Wacka, 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 wacka. It's like a 555, just wacka, wacka, wacka. And what you have is you have a capacitor, okay? And then you have four switches. So what you do is you hook these two switches up and you charge that capacitor. And then you disconnect this and then you connect it over here and it comes out. So basically what you're doing is you're charging the capacitor and then turning it upside down and sending it out. Charge the capacitor, turning it upside down and sending it out. So that's how you're inverting the, 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 inverting the voltage. So if you have a five volt rail, you charge this capacitor with five volts, you turn it upside down, you shove it on the output, you get negative five volts. And that's all these, that's all these chips are. They're, they're, they're very good. So uh, this one happens to be a TLC 1044. I've got a, I looked at my junk bin and I've got a bunch of them. I've got 1044s. I've got uh, uh, TLC. Let's see. This is a T, this is an LTC 1044. I've got a LT 1044 1054 a 1054. That's a different chip. And I've got some uh, TC 962. Um, and I have the 962 on the breadboard here. But like I said, they're all about the same. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at one working. So, uh, well, wait a minute. Let's take a look at schematic first because the schematic is trivial. <laughs> okay, so that's the schematic. Uh, you need the chip. You need a capacitor. That's the one that gets turned upside down. Okay, it's an external. So it's 10 microfarads and just turns upside down. And then you need to, to uh, smooth the data out. You need some place to store that charge. And so you have a capacitor on the output. This, this uh, typical application here shows a 10 microfarad. It, you, get, you get less ripple if you have higher. I have 100 microfarads in my schematic, um, but I have a 10 microfarad that's the uh, switch capacitor here. And then they have other things inside. Some of them have zener diodes inside. Some of them have the circuitry inside and stuff, but this is the basic thing. And a lot of them are pin compatible. You can just drop them in and out. Th three of mine are all pin compatible. You just, you can put them in. All right. So that's the circuit. Uh, this is what it looks like on the breadboard. This is the this is the capacitor that gets switched right here. This is the capacitor on the output, and here's a capacitor on the input to to uh, uh, hold up the supply while it's switching. So uh, I have three capacitors, and then uh, I have a couple of load resistors. Uh, we'll, we'll measure it unloaded, loaded with a hundred uh, with a loaded with one thousand ohms, and loaded with a hundred ohms. Okay, and so. Uh, Let's uh, take a look at what it does. We have five volts going in, and there we go. We have uh, we have a shadow on the uh, on the meter. So we have uh, gosh, can I get there? We go. Um, so we have negative five volts on the output. So five volts on the input, negative five volts on the output. All right. So one of the things you have to watch out for in the circuits, though, is loading them. Okay. So I'm going to load it with one uh, k. Right. So that will be five milliamps. And at five milliamps, it drops down to minus 4.8. All right. And then I will load it with 100 ohms, which will be 50, 50 milliamps. And my meter's about to turn off. Let's see here. Let me put this on here. And we can see that the voltage drops to minus 3.3. .3. So um, while it can output, 50 milliamps, it's not going to give you the whole five volts. So a lot of these things are specced at a particular um, output rating, but they don't really kind of up front tell you, oh, oh, and the voltage is going to droop. So you have to kind of take that into consideration for yourself. Um, but a lot of times, you know, a milliamp is all you need. Um, these things are pretty popular. You may have seen, the first time you may have seen these chips is on the uh, MAX232 uh, chip. The MAX232 chip makes you hook up four 
10 microfarad capacitors and it generates the uh, the negative rail. It generates the like plus 12 and the minus 5 or something like that. I forget. Um, anyway, max, max uh, 232 is a charge uh, switch capacitor uh, switch capacitor type circuit, just like this one. All right, so let's take a look at it on the oscilloscope. All right, so here's the output. Uh, this is uh, two volts per scale, so two, four, five volts. And let me load it with, uh, oh, that is loaded. Okay, so this is unloaded. And this is loaded with, uh, did it drop any? Wait a minute, let's see. Yeah, so this is unloaded. This is loaded with uh, 1K, and this is loaded with uh, 100 ohms. And you can see that it, it does it does droop a bit, and I think you can start to see that a little bit of ripple starts to happen as well. Okay, let's go back to 1K loading. All right, and uh, let's see if there's any ripple on here. So the way that you measure that with oscilloscope is put it into AC coupling. Put it into AC coupling. And there it is. And now we can turn up the uh, vertical gain and see if we see anything. And I don't see much here. And let me go over to uh, 100, 100 ohms. And there we go. There's the ripple at a, with 100 ohms. So it was very, very quiet at uh, 1K, but at 100 ohms, this is 50 milliamps. We're getting about a plus or minus 50 millivolt um, ripple. And uh, you can kind of see the charge transfer and stuff, right? It, you can see the charge as it's uh, bumping there. And then it holds and it charges and it holds and it charges. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Anyway, quick introduction to these little parts. Um, you may have a, a need for them. Sometimes you need just a quick way put it in a comparator or put it in an op amp to do a small little task and you just need a negative voltage. Um, you have a small signal anyway, so you know even minus three volts is fine. Um, but uh, if you uh, operate these things under low conditions, then you can get uh, you can get fairly good voltages out of them. And I'm, I'm driving this with five volts in. If I drove it with uh, 12 volts in, of course I'd get minus 12 volts out and even loaded I might even get minus eight, right? Um, so that's another thing about these parts, even though there are a bunch of them, uh, the max voltage that you can put on them varies from part to part. So this one, max voltage is 12 volts, but it is CMOS, so this one's an efficient, efficient switcher. So the other ones are a little bit less efficient because they're bipolar, um, or I shouldn't say bi, well, maybe they are bipolar. I'm not quite sure what their construction is, but um, the uh, LTC, and then the other part that I had was an LT, so I'm not sure, quite sure what the difference is. But anyway, watch out for the uh, max voltage that you can put on these things. Sometimes it's 10 volts, sometimes it's 15 volts, sometimes it's only 5 volts. So yeah, just check the data sheet when you, uh, when you use these parts. And uh, make sure you monitor the voltage output because it's going to droop. And make sure you monitor the ripple and see if that gets you in trouble or not. You can always put on more capacitance, which will help the ripple a little bit. Um, but there will be some.